Welcome to United Community Bank. This session is for business online banking customers who initiate ACH credits and payroll and electronic federal tax payment services. So you'll take your browser to www.ucbi.com, go to the business section, then go to online and mobile banking. Here we have information about the different features in online banking, information about how to download and use mobile, a resources page, how to enroll, information about secure access code, codes used to provide authentication services for your access, and browser requirements. If we go back to resources, we see that we have an e-guide and a business online banking training presentation, as well as video tutorials on retail banking, commercial functions, mobile banking, bill pay, and security. We also provide a Treasury Management Quick Reference Guides that are open as a PDF and provide information about each one of these Treasury Management functions. In order to sign into online banking, take your cursor up to the login ID, put in your login, put in your password, It will then come up and ask you for your secure access code. Your secure access code is a one-time PIN, and it is valid for 15 minutes. Again, the secure access code is used to authenticate you into the system and provide you security for your login and for submitting transactions. It is recommended that if you are using this computer and it is your computer, that you register the device, this allows you to bypass the secure access code for login. If you're using a publicly accessed computer or a computer that is not yours, it is recommended that you click Do Not Register Device. In a previous session, we covered business online banking basic functions. If you would like to review that, please direct your browser back to that particular video. In that video, we talked about accounts, we talked about accessing history and different functions. We talked about doing transfers. We talked about looking at our settings and working with alerts, home page preferences, account preferences, and security preferences. In this session, we're going to talk about ACH credits and how to submit payroll items and how to submit electronic federal tax payment systems. So we'll go to commercial functions and we are making a payment. So if we are doing payroll or we're doing payments out to a vendor, we'll click on payments, and it will take us into a screen. If you are converting from another bank, we have pulled over template information and recipient information to assist you so that you don't have to rekey everything that is in the system. So a lot of your information can be pulled over and be available for you as soon as you sign into United Community Bank. In this case, I want to go in and I'm going to do a payment from file. I have my information in a particular file in order to do payroll. That file can be a comma delimited file with a specific format with the recipient name, the routing transit number, the account number, the account type, and the amount. Account type is signified by a 1 for checking, a 2 for savings, or a 3 for loan. To see this, I've got an example. So an example of a comma delimited file in this format is this one. So in this case, my customer name is test account, comma, the routing transit number 06111 which is the routing number for United Community Bank. Anybody that you're paying is going to have a a different routing number based on their check, and it'll be down there in the micro information of that check. There's the account number. This is for a checking account, and it is for $1. So what I'm going to do is also show you that you could pull this information in a NACHA formatted file or a payroll file. A lot of times your accounting software will create this kind of file for you and it will be pre-formatted in the correct format. There are some changes in the company header record 
and the batch header record that you may need to change if you are converting to United Community Bank. Uh, there will be information in other communication to you indicating how, what you need to do. So in this case, I'm going to select my file to upload, which is this comma delimited file. I'll click open, and I'm going to click upload file. And this is the same process that you would use if you were doing a NACHA formatted file. I'm going to choose the account I want to withdraw from. So this is my account here at United, my business account, business analysis, ending in 2864. I'll choose my subsidiary, and I'll choose my effective date. The effective date is the date that the funds should be in the customer's account. At United Community Bank, we provide, we provide one-day credits. You can also future date credits. So once you have chosen this and chosen your pay from account and your subsidiary and effective date, you can go ahead and click approve. If you're in a company that is requiring dual approval, you may have one person who has to draft first, and then we'll need to go into the activity center to have someone else approve it. But I'll go ahead and click approve. The system's going to come up and ask me for my secure access code. And for ACH and wire transactions, a secure access code is required. And again, this helps to protect your information and protect your funds at United Community Bank. So I'm waiting for that secure access code to come through. There it is. And I'll click verify. Then the system will come up and give you a reference number. So if you had multiple transactions in that comma delimited file, it would tell you the total amount of the file that you just submitted. I can close this or I could go straight to the activity center. So if I go straight to the activity center, it will go ahead and pull up and show me my transaction. It will give me that reference number and it tells me what I have done in this transaction. Another way to get to the activity center is to come over to Transactions and Activity Center. I can click here, and it will just give me a summary. If I click again, it will give me detailed information about what I've done. It will give me a transaction process. So notice that this is currently in an authorized status. As long as it's in a draft or authorized status, you have the ability to come over to Actions and cancel. So if you realize that you have submitted something that you need to take back, come into the Activity Center. If it's still in authorized or drafted, you can click Cancel. So let's do it again, and let's put it into a drafted status so that you can see how to do dual approval. So again, I'm going to go over here into my Payment from File. I'm going to choose my file type, in this case a payroll, and I'm going to choose the account, the file that I want to upload, upload the file, choose my from account, make sure my subsidiary is correct, and then choose my effective date, and put it into draft status. And it comes up and it lets me, that, lets me know that the payment has been drafted but has not yet been approved. I can then view in the Activity Center. And if I needed to, I could go in here and I would be able to actually work with my transaction. So here it is. It's in a drafted status. The previous transaction has been canceled. So this is in a drafted status. I can come over here to Actions, and I can click on Approve. So I have authority to both draft and approve my transactions. If you have only draft approval, draft authority access, then someone else at your company will need to do the approving. But in this case, I want to go ahead and approve. Again, use my secure access code to protect your information, and I will get that on my phone. And then I can verify. 
Similarly, you can use this function not only to do payroll, but also to do payments. So if you have vendors that you need to pay, then you can use this function as well. I'll go ahead and cancel this transaction and confirm and close. You can also go into payments. You can do a payment from file and you can do a ACH batch. Choose your file, open, upload the file. We're going to pay from this account, create my subsidiary. I can future date the transaction, so I could, I could say let's make it effective for April 6th. Click Approve. And it'll come up and ask me for my secure access code. So this is a payment from my test client account to my test client for $1. I can view in the Activity Center. It's in an authorized status. The recipient is my test account for $1. And so that way I can make a payment to another company if I needed to. Again, I will go ahead and cancel this because I do not want these two to process. Well, let's say that you already have your recipients all set up and you wanted to go in and make a payment to a particular recipient through payroll or make a payment to a company. You can come into ACH Payments. You can choose the recipient that you need to send to. I'm going to go on and look for my, my test accounts. This is telling me that something in my information is out of date. So I can click Close. I can come over here to this little pencil, which is for an Edit button, and I can review. So I need to put in some information. And because I'm in Greenville, I'm going to use my Greenville information. And then let me go and check and make sure that the account is set up correctly. So it's set up for ACH Wire. Got all of my information. I'm going to set it for ACH only, though. Save my recipient. And this will save it in all linked payment templates. So I'm going to use my test. And if I want to pay a dollar or a dollar five, and I want to put some information in here. If you're accounting software, can create it into information. It'll go ahead and pre-format this when you upload your file. But in this case, I'm going to do a single payment, and I want to tell it that I'm paying invoice 123456. Some companies are able to interpret this information. Sometimes if you're doing an actual addenda, it's got to be in a specific EDI 820 format. But again, that is more for your accounting software to know. Choose the account that you're paying from. And then choose your effective date. In this case, I can put it all the way up to, out to April 27th, or future date, even, even further past that. Go ahead and click Approve, and it will come up and ask me for my secure access code again. And so I have my transaction in process. It shows the effective date of 426. And that's the date, the effective date is the date that it should be in this account uh, as a credit. I can then go back into the Transaction Activity Center, and I'm able to cancel the transaction. We can also do electronic federal tax payments and other kind of tax payments into states by going back to our commercial functions and tax payment. 
So if I wanted to choose different um, tax forms, I can choose different state tax forms, or I can go ahead and use a federal tax form. In this case, I'll just use the uh, form 1041. It's coming from my test client. Got my tax ID. I choose my effective date. I choose my end period date. So let's back that up to the end of the quarter. And I'm going to pull it from that account. And let's go ahead and say we're going to put $5. And then the tax type, we'll just do a deposit. So notice that the information for this uh, to the account number and to the routing number has already been filled in. This is information that we have from the IRS. We'll go ahead and click Approve. And the Secure Access Code will come up again so that I can verify that this is a transaction that I want to make. Click Verify. And my transaction is now in process. Similarly, I can choose other um, types of uh, states, so if I needed to pay on to the North Carolina withholding, I can then choose these. These are pre-formatted. It will walk you through the information that you need to put in based on your account. And again, this shows up in the Transactions Activity Center. And if you realize, you see that it's still in an authorized status. So draft or authorized, I have the ability to come over here and click Cancel. So in doing credits, it's very simple, just coming over into the commercial functions and choosing the kind of payment that you need to make and uploading your file, whether it's a comma delimited file or a NACHA formatted file, or making your own tax payments. At the end of every session that you finish with United Community Bank, always make sure you log off. Logging off will take you back to www.ucbi.com and for more information about our business services or about online banking, go to Business. You can go to Online and Mobile Banking. And you're going to have all of those resources that are available to you, as well as the Treasury Management Quick Reference Guides. So thank you for banking with United Community Bank, and we look forward to serving you. Thank you.